I was a nervous kid, sensitive by nature. I wasn't well equipped to deal with life's small problems when I was young. I grew up in a house filled with a lot of love, but few kids in my neighborhood I could call my friend. So I would internalize the fears and bad feelings I accumulated throughout the day and go to bed with them, oftentimes waking up with terrible nightmares. When that happened, most times I would suck it up and go back to sleep. But then when they were particularly bad, I'd climb into bed with my parents for protection. It didn't happen a lot, but their warmth and love comforted me immensely, and I would fall into a deep sleep. I bring this up because I understand other parents would not allow this, which seems so cruel to me in retrospect. And while my father is a very warm and sensitive person, it was my mother's love and sensitivity that I was drawn to. I'm 44 years old now, and any time I tell her about some problem I'm facing, her words are always encouraging. My mom is definitely a mother lion, extremely protective of her cubs, and a tough woman to cross. She was born and raised in Ireland in a comfortable lifestyle. Unfortunately, her father died of polio when she was only seven years old, and from everything she says, he was a wonderful man who we were all diminished by never having known. Losing a loving parent like that at such a young age left her with a small scar of sadness that she carries with her to this day. But it didn't weaken her, instead making her strong and resolute. She excelled at everything she tried, a good tennis player, an excellent student, a top nurse, and a wonderful singer who could have sung opera if she had chosen to go down that path. She left Ireland for England to study nursing when she was only 17 years old, and there was no better trained nurse than an English nurse. She lived and worked in Manchester and came home to Ireland from time to time, but she preferred the faster pace of her British home to the smaller place she grew up in. And she loved to travel. Paris, Lourdes, Rome. She saw more of the world before she was 30 than most people see in their lifetimes. Then she visited New York City in the late 50s. Two of her brothers and her sister had moved here during that decade, and when she came here, she instantly fell in love with the place. In January 1961, she moved to New York permanently, a few miles away from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. And what a year to become a Yankee fan. 1961, Mantle, Maris, Whitey, Elston Howard, and Yogi made up one of the greatest teams of all time that year. Indeed, when my mother nursed at Lenox Hill Hospital, Roger Maris was one of her patients. <laughs> Two years after coming here, she was at a party, and her best friend's boyfriend introduced her to his best friend. Of course, that's my father. She didn't care for him at first, but six months later they met again and his warmth and sense of humor won her over. On Memorial Day 1964, they got engaged. In February 65, they got married. She was working very hard, doing double shifts and taking on extra projects to help pay for their wedding. And she got a nasty infection in her hand before the big day. She had to have it drained and bandaged a couple of days before. She doesn't get sick often in life, but when she does, it usually is from working too hard and resting too little. She became a citizen just before I was born, and only brought me to Ireland once when I was almost one. My mother was totally devoted to my brother, sister, and I growing up, easing us away from being Irish children and more towards being German-Americans like my father, because that was the neighborhood we grew up in. She enlisted us in German choir and a German language school. She kept us busy with activities like the Scouts and donated so much of her own time to our pursuits. She gave up nursing after my brother was born and budgeted it less to be a full-time housewife and mother. She cleaned our house and cooked our meals and never had the TV on during the day. She didn't know any of the soap operas of the time because she didn't watch them, so she had less in common with the other mothers. But she always conducted herself like her life was important and not to be wasted. My mother was a dynamo always working, always doing, and we took advantage of that, unfortunately. A few times when I was growing up, I had to have a, do a paper for class on some subject I could care less about, like, say, biology, and my mother would stay up late reading my textbook and writing a rough sketch of the report for me. I'd get up early the next morning and rewrite it in my own handwriting while she cooked pastina for breakfast. She always hoped that I learned from the paper I rewrote. I guess I did in a way because the subject matter was so boring and dense that her essays would always explain it to me in terms I could get a handle on. In October of 1978, I was 12 years old and showing off how I could shave for my friend. I dragged the razor the wrong way across and really gashed my upper lip. I was bleeding all over the bathroom and thankfully my friend was there to stop the bleeding and calm me down. When I was finally relaxed, I got the phone call. 
our local priest told me that my brother and sister were with him, that my mother had gone to the hospital because they had been in a car accident. My father had turned a corner and the sun blinded out the windshield, and he never saw the train's concrete pillar that was planted in the middle of the street. The car was told when my mother had smashed her head into the windshield, 350 stitches to make her whole again. The plastic surgeon who worked on her in the ER was a magician, hiding nearly every cut, and once the healing took place, you can't even see a scar. But he had help. My mother was diligent with smearing fish oil on her face to save her complexion. To this day, people would never know anything had happened to her. My mother has a wonderful sense of humor, and we can always make her laugh, but she is definitely a serious-minded person, who to this day will correct your grammar if your <laughs> language starts to stray. She brought us up to be kind and loving, to be hardworking and ambitious. She wanted us to be good Catholics, but more so to be good human beings. And I think we've achieved that for the most part. She's been sick in the hospital lately, and standing back watching her, watching how my brother, sister, and I conduct ourselves and how we are with her. I'm proud of how we turned out and how she instilled that sense of self in us. When I'm around them at times like these, I feel like I'm 10 years old again, in an odd way but in a good way, because while we have an adult relationship with her, obviously, we all still love her with the same childlike wonder. We are in our 40s now, and that doesn't change. I laugh when I hear two big grown men, brothers, discussing their mother in almost childlike terms, but my wife says that's how we sound too. <laughs> this woman, who I love so much, helped make me the man I am today, and I like that man, thank you very much. <laughs> So when I go to my parents' house for dinner a couple of times a month, I enjoy their company immensely, but I'm also proud of how they trained us to face this world with a strong but kind heart. And a lot of that. And a lot of that is Pat Rucker's doing. And I wanted to thank her for being such a wonderful mother. Love from the Frederick.